December 2017, <clears throat> paper four, variant three. Okay, most of you are asking about 10B. I'm going to explain to you 10A because as in most questions of this nature, what you do in the first part of the question has a bearing on what comes up afterwards. So it will help us to understand how to do the next part in a clearer way. This is one of the first topics in the syllabus, which is expressing a number as a product of its prime factors, which can be done in various ways. One of the ways is to use the branch method. So you split the numbers up into a pair of factors. Okay, there could be any factors, but if you choose one prime, like for example, two times 90, and you circle the prime, Okay, so you stop there, so you've got 90 now. You can say that's 2 times 45. You've got prime there. And then you can split the 45 in two. You can say that's going to be 3 times 15. And the 15 you can split up in two. Oops, the 15 is not prime, so I'm not going to circle it. <coughs> so the 15 can also split up in two. 3 times 5. And there we've got all of those numbers of prime. So you can say 100 is equal to 180 is equal to 2 squared. That's 2 times 2 times, and you've got 3 going twice, so 3 squared times, and you've got 1, 5. Okay, 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. <coughs> and you can check to make sure that this product is 180. So you've got 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 9 is 180. So we know that uh, we're sure that we're correct in our expressing as a product of prime factors. Okay, part two. It says find the lowest common multiple of 180 and 54. Now there's again many ways of doing this, but I'm going to first of all split 54 up into product of its prime factors and show you a, different, a few different methods. Now first of all, 54 can be split into 2 times 27. And 27 splits up into <coughs> 3 times 9. And of course, 9 splits up into 3 times 3. So we end up with 54 is equal to 2 times 3 cubed, which, of course, that's 27 times 2, which is 54, which makes sense. So we can write down 180 as 2 squared times, sorry, 2. two <clears throat> 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. I can write down 54 as 2 times 3 cubed. Now, what I'm going to do is something which is, seems a bit strange, but I'm because um, there's a 2, there's a 2, there's a 3, there's 5, on the bottom number, 54, there's no 5. I'm going to write down times 5 to the power of 0, because anything to the power of 0 is 1. So if I write 5 to the power of 0, this value is 1. I'm just writing it so that I have a number in each of these columns. Now, we're asked to find the LCM. Now, the LCM of a set of numbers like this is basically the lowest common multiple. Now, the multiples that we have here of each of the factors, okay, a multiple, remember, is a number that's in the times table of a certain number. So the multiples of 2, for example, are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. Okay, so the multiples are always the same or bigger. <clears throat> so when I'm trying to find the lowest common multiple, I'm looking at the 2s, okay, when they're expressed as prime factors, I'm looking for the highest number of 2s that you can see in the pair of numbers that we have here. So that's 2 squared. So we're looking for the lowest common multiple, we're looking for the highest form of that number. If we look at the 3s, we've got 3 cubed. And if we look at the 5s, well, this is 5 to the power of 1, and this is 5 to the power of 0, so it's times 5 to the power of 1. So you should always write down the common multiples. Here, it doesn't look like 5 is common, but in fact, 5 to the power of 0 is technically one of the factors, which is equal to 1. And the highest form of the 5 is the 5 to the power of 1. So that will give you the LCM 
okay, which is going to be 4 times 27 times 5, which is going to be 20 times 27. Now, 2 times 27 is 500, it's 54, plus a 0, so 540 is the LCM. So the LCM is 540. That's your answer for the LCM of these two numbers. They could also be done in a different way, which I'll show you. Okay, one of those ways, one second, one of those ways is by using Venn diagrams. So here you have a Venn diagram, one circle to represent, but we don't even need, we don't actually need the rectangle part because everything's inside either one or both of the numbers. Don't even have to have the rectangle. Okay, so we have one of the circles to represent 180, and the other circle represents 54. Now, the first thing we do is write down what's common. You see, one of the twos is common. We see two of the threes are common. So you've got three and three. Okay, now in 180, there are two twos and two threes and one five. Now, one of the twos is taken, so you've got to have one twos. Both of the threes are now taken in here. You've got to have one five. Okay, and in 54, you've got a two, and three threes, or what? Two of the threes are taken, so you've got one left outside there. And, well, there's no five, so that's it. Okay, now, <clears throat> if you want to find the LCM, it's basically every number that appears, okay, without counting anything twice. So you're going to have two times two, which is two squared, times three times three times three, which is three cubed times 5, which is exactly the same thing that we've got here. Now, if you want to find the highest common factor, which is also something that is asked, the highest common factor, which is not asked in this question, but it's going to be asked in the next part, so I'm going to explain. The highest common factor is when you look, remember, a factor is always the same or less than the numbers themselves, so the highest common factor will be the, the, the number for each of these which is common, but in its lowest form. So the LCM, you look for the highest form. The HCF, the highest common factor, you look for the lowest form. So if you look at the twos, the lowest form is two. Okay, if we look at the threes, the lowest form is three to the power of two. And if you look at the fives, the lowest form is five to the power of zero, which is just going to be one anyway, right? So just write it down just to show what's going on. So you've got two times nine, which is 18. So if the question asks us to find the HCF, which it doesn't, would give 18 as an answer. I'm, I'm explaining this because of the next part of the question. And by the way, if you want to find the HCF from the Venn diagram method, <coughs> you just look at, look at what's common between the two numbers, the highest common factor, which is 3 times 3 times 2, which is 9 times 2, which of course gives us the same answer, 18. Okay, so there's two different ways of finding the LCM. In fact, there's more than this, but these are two ways that <coughs> I'm explaining to you. And what we're going to do next is we're going to um, answer part B in the next video.